Now come to the corpus spongiosum. Corpus spongiosum is the forward continuation of the bulb and distally it presents a conical enlargement which is known as the glans penis and throughout its length it is traversed by the spongy part of the urethra. Now come to the coverings of this penis. At first the layer is the skin. The skin of the penis it is thin, delicate, dark and hairless and it envelops the body of the penis completely and it is loosely attached to the fascial sheet of the penis and that's why it is freely mobile. And at the glans penis it is folded upon itself to form the prepuce or foreskin which covers the glans for a variable distance. That means when the skin is folded itself near the glans the skin is named as foreskin or prepuce and the prepuce can be retracted during coitus or manually and there is a small median fold passes from the inner aspect of the prepuce to the glands this is known as the frenulum of the prepuce which plays an important role during an orgasm so what is the prepuce we already told you it is a fold of skin which covers the glands for a variable extent and it is attached up to the neck of the penis and what is frenulum we already told you it is a median fold of skin on the ventral aspect of the glands which passes from the inner surface of the prepuce to the external urethral meatus and preputal sac it is a space between the glands and the prepuce so let's see So this is the skin, the outer covering of the penis and the folded of skin which covers the glands this is known as the prepuce, this is known as the prepuce and another median fold of skin which connects the glands, mental surface of the glands to the inner surface of the prepuce this is known as frenulum of the penis. And the spaces or gap between the prepuce and the glands this space is known as the preputal sac now come to the next layer of the penis that is the superficial fascia of the penis The superficial fascia it consists of two layers one is superficial layer and another is a deep layer the superficial layer is devoid of fat and consists of loose areolar tissue and it may contain few muscle fibers the name of the muscle is the peripenic muscle and the deep fascia of the penis is known as the bax fascia So let's see this so we told you at first the skin so this is the skin of the penis then next layer is the we told you the superficial fascia so this is the superficial fascia of the skin and the deep fascia of the penis we told you the name of the deep fascia of the penis is the bax fascia so this is the bax fascia or deep fascia of the penis now come to the support of the penis the two structures actually the two ligaments support the penis one is the fundiform ligament so it springs from the lower part of the linea alba and splits into lamellae and which encloses the proximal part of the body of the penis and support the penis and number two is the suspensory ligament it is attached in front of the pubic symphysis and it blends with the box fascia or deep fascia of the penis from the either side of the body of the penis so look at that this is the fundiform ligament it's arising from the linea alba and is divided into two lamella and supports the proximal part of the body of the penis and the last one is the suspensory ligament 
it is attached near the pubic symphysis and support the penis. Now come to the artery supply of the penis. The penis is supplied by the deep arteries of the penis. Number two, dorsal artery of the penis, arteries of the bulb and superficial dorsal artery of the penis. Out of these, the first three pairs of the arteries arise from the internal pudental arteries. Internal pudental artery and which are the branches of the anterior division of the internal iliac arteries and the last pair that means the superficial dorsal arteries of the penis it arises from the superficial external pudental arteries which is coming from the femoral arteries so let's see the blood supply so this is the blood supply you can see the dorsal artery of the penis and here the picture Now come to the venous drainage. The venous drainage of the penis are uh, drain the venous blood from the penis via superficial dorsal vein of the penis and deep dorsal vein of the penis. The superficial dorsal vein of the penis they drain the venous blood into the superficial external pudental veins and the deep dorsal vein of the penis they drain the venous blood into the prosthetic venous plexus. The lymphatic drainage, the glans penis. The lymphatics from the glans penis drain into the deep inguinal lymph node and the raised part of the penis except the glans the lymphatics drain into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Now the nerve supply. It has sensory innervation, it has motor innervation and autonomic innervation. The sensory innervation derives from the dorsal nerve of the penis and ilio inguinal nerve and the motor supply that means the movement of the penis it is done by the perineal branch of the pudental nerve and the autonomic innervation it is also supplied by the autonomic nervous system here the sympathetic nerves arising from the inferior hypogastric plexus and these sympathetic nerves are vasoconstrictor and parasympathetic nervous system are vasodilator said so they dilate the vessels and the parasympathetic fibers arising from the sacral 2, 3 and sacral 4 segment of the spinal cord. Now come to the some clinical anatomy. So importance at first the importance what is importance? Importance means the failure to achieve the dermosense erection is called importance. Number two, priapism. The persistent painful erection is known as the priapism and it occurs due to mainly uh, we can find this a disease, the sickle cell disease is one kind of hematological disorder where we find the priapism. Priapism means painful erection of the penis. And then you have to know the most common problem in the penis that is the phimosis. It is the it is the narrowing of the distal end of the prepuce or foreskin. So uh, it may interfere with the maturation and it usually affects the children. So narrowing of the prepuce which disturbs with the maturation is known as the phimosis. And the treatment of the phimosis is to cut off the prepis that is known as the circumcision. So what is circumcision? It is the surgical removal of the prepucial skin or the foreskin of the penis. In children and adult the circumcision is sometimes required to relieve the patient from a phimosis. And sometimes the, some religious view the Muslims and Jews causes circumcision. Now we will discuss this picture of the penis. So it is a very important picture showing the blood vessels and nerves of the penis. So look at that. We told you the coverings of the penis. The outermost covering is the skin. Then the next layer is the superficial fascia. And 
between the skin and superficial fascia we can see the superficial dorsal vein of the penis superficial dorsal artery of the penis then this green color layer is the deep fascia of the penis the or the box fascia and just below the box fascia we can see there is deep dorsal vein of the penis deep dorsal artery of the penis and dorsal nerve of the penis and so below the box fascia we can see three masses of erectile tissue these are the two corpus cavernosum and one corpa corpora spongiosum so look at that each corpora cavernosum is traversed by the deep artery of the penis and they are covered by the tunica albuginea and the corpus spongiosum if we look to the corpus spongiosum you can see it is traversed by some artery of the bulb of the penis and in the middle of the corpus spongiosum there is passing of the urethra and they are also covered by the tunica albuginea but separately so these are the coverings of the penis so from outer to inward skin superficial fascia then box fascia and then the three masses of the erectile tissues so that's all about the structure of the penis